Hey everybody, it's Craig Vector here. In this video, I'm going to give you five reasons why you should be using a large field monitor like the 17-inch OC LCM 170A. More details about that, so stick around. But anyway, here's the five reasons, starting with number one, framing. In videography, just like in photography, if you've ever shot tethered to a computer, you know how different it is when you look at a little screen on your camera and then you see it on the big screen. So when it comes to framing, the more you can see, the better. So 17 inch monitor, that's a good sort of in-between size. It's not quite a 21 inch and it's a lot better than say like an on-camera five inch or seven inch. So framing, number one, it'll help you get framing whether you're in the studio or in the field. So number two, focus getting accurate focus you see it on the big screen you're not going to miss the little details that are out of focus so number two it's going to help you with your focus number three getting an accurate exposure sometimes with a field monitor you have extra tools for your exposure so you might have access to say a waveform you'll have access to false color you'll have access to a vector scope so things that you might not have on your camera model you'll get access to on a field monitor and we're going to get through the menu and all that so stick around and watch that also number four besides you know having accurate framing and focus and exposure it's the details the fine details that you miss when you're looking at a three inch lcd screen especially if it's outside and it's bright you'd be surprised at the things you miss and photography as well if you're just sort of shooting in camera and you've got this little screen and then you're shooting tethered the little things like a hair out of place or maybe a collar or maybe a mic might be showing or maybe a wrinkled shirt or a shirt that's not tucked in properly you name it when you've got a big screen, you can look at every little sector of that screen and you can really see the little things that you would miss on the back of a camera. And number five, other people. Sometimes there'll be other people on set and they wanna see what you're shooting. So having a 17 inch monitor on a light stand, then you can put it off to the side. They're not in your way and they can monitor what's going on. And if they have any tips as far as maybe the wardrobe or the framing or anything like that, they can give you some input. All right, let's quickly recap the five reasons and then we'll get into the menu and some other stuff. So make sure you stick around for that. All right, number one, framing. Having a larger screen is gonna help you with your framing. Number two, getting accurate and sharp focus. Number three, getting an accurate exposure. Number four, the details. It's all about the details when it comes to videography or photography. And number five, if there's other people on set, then they can look at that monitor and you can focus on your work. Now let's get into the menu system of this and I'll give you some tips. Also stick around for part two of this because we're going to be talking about some of the camera settings that you can use via HDMI as well. So don't miss that. And also stick around to the end and I'll give you my thoughts on what can be improved, what I liked, and what I think you should do next. Anyway, let's get into the menu system. All right, in this part of the video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the menu options on the OC 17 inch monitor. In the second part of this walkthrough, I'm gonna show you some of the options that you can control via your camera through the HDMI port as well. So stick around for that part. To start off with, I have the audio meter on the left hand side. I have the waveform monitor and the vector scope on the bottom right. Now you can adjust that transparency. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Also, I have a safe area guide set up. Now all of this is adjustable and there's also different function buttons so you can access the ones that you use the most. So I've got this running on the HDMI port right now. I'm gonna go through these function buttons that I preset and then I'll show you how to preset them. So I press F1, you can see here I have focus assist off. Now if I press that again, I have focus assist on. So I could use this to make sure I have accurate focus. Now I can also set this to different colors if I'd like as well as the intensity. And so once I have my focus, I can just toggle that off by pressing that. So you can see there's different options. There's gray and then there's color. So the gray just means it's all gray in the background, no color on the monitor. And then I have that off. Now, if we go to function button two, I've assigned false color. So now you can see some false color. Now the false color that this monitor uses might be different than what you have on your camera if you have false color in your camera so make sure you're aware of the differences between the different types of false color now there's nothing peaking here but if there was then you can set the zebras to whatever you'd like just like some cameras have zebra settings so i'm going to toggle that off now also we have markers that we can turn on and off now you see i had the center marker and i had a safe area guide and i'll put those back on now I'll show you how you can add different markers as well coming up. 
Now we have F5, and that's the audio meter. I can turn that on or off. And again, too, you can monitor the audio on this through speakers or through a headset. So I'll turn that back on. Now let's go through some of the menu features and how you would adjust those. So if I hit the menu button, you can see here, the first tab we have their input, our format, 1080p, 24 frames per second. And we have a look profile of D65 Rec 709. So I'm shooting this as if I'm going to grade it. So my grading monitor is set to D65 Rec 709. And so this way I know that whatever I'm shooting here is going to correspond to my grading monitor. You can see we're on 16.9. Now let's go through some of the different input selections. So we'll go down and you can see that we have SDI, we have HDMI. I'm using the HDMI input. Also, you can see here, this is where we would adjust our focus assist levels. And I have mine set at 100, which is the max. And then I have it at green. Like I said, you can go through those. So to do that, we would hit enter. We would go to this menu. We would toggle down. Now I could go to, let's say I want to change this. So first I have to put it on so that you can see it. So I'm going to hit enter again, and I'm going to toggle that on. Now I'll go down. So I'll just go out here and I'll go down with the button and let's just change the color. So it's obvious. I'm going to go here and then maybe you prefer red. Let's say that you've got a lot of green in the shot, but no red. So whatever works for you in your scenario, we have red, we have blue, we have green. And I like green, so I just chose that. But you have options for that. And like I said, too, you can control the intensity of that by going up and then hitting Enter, and then you could lower that. So if you think that's overkill, you can you know go down to 95, whatever works for you. So I'm going to go back out. Here also we can set our zebra level. So there's nothing blowing out here, but I've got mine set for 98. Again, I hit Enter. I can go up to 100 or I can go down to 95, whatever is a good safe zebra level for you, and then back out. So you can set your zebras, you can set your focus assist right here. And then another helpful screen is the markers. So depending on what you're shooting, and again, you have your safety marker. I've got mine set up 95 marker level. So that's the intensity of the gray marker. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna hit enter, and then I can adjust the different marker settings here. And I'm going to go to marker level, hit enter, and then I can toggle through. So two, you can see it got brighter. And then again, here at one, it's brighter. And so depending on how bright you want those markers. So I've just got it faint so it doesn't obscure my view. But you can set that any way you want. And so there's a bunch of different marker settings that you can use here. I'm just going to go out here and back to the main menu. And we have some audio options too. You can see here we have the audio source, audio meter. You can move the meter around. I've got the top left. You can do it vertical. You can do it horizontal. So let me just show you that. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to come down here. And then I'm going to just say, let's make this horizontal. And then I'll get out. And then you can see if that's better for the shot that you're doing. If you like it that way, that's another option you have there too. So back into the menu. And we're going to scroll down. So we're going to go to display. Now you can see we have different options. So if I put that on, it'll show that we have an HDMI connection at the top left. Now also too, I can go through the different waveforms here. So let's go down to here and I'll click enter and then I can scroll through. So I've got the waveform off. I've got just the waveform there. I've got just the vector scope and there's 75 and there's a hundred. And then mode one combines the waveform with the vector scope. And then you can see that's just another version of that as well. Now also I can control what that looks like. So how bright that is on the screen. So if I come down here and I click enter, you can see if I go through this, I can control the intensity. So if you're not worried about that blocking out some of your shot, you can make it a very opaque background so you can see it a lot better. But if you want to kind of see what's happening at the same time, you can go through and you have trans one, which is, you know, translucent and you have translucent two, translucent three. So however you want to configure that. Also too, you can control the position of that. So if you want to move it around the screen, you can do that as well. So we're just going to get out of this menu here. And you can see we have closed captioning uh, that might apply to some people. And then we have the config 
and you can see we have some different settings here for picture in picture and picture in picture position the backlight so that would control some of the brightness and 30 is the max now if we go down to aperture that is like a sharpness control so let me go back up and if we go menu and we scroll down aperture is basically sharpness and you have 24 is your max so I set it on 25 sharpness I don't need it to be crazy sharp now again we can go back and we can go to look profiles now what's cool about this is there's built-in profiles plus we can upload our own LUTs if we want to so I'm just gonna hit enter and I'll scroll through some of these right now for you so I'm gonna hit enter again now what I can do is I can go through the built-in LUTs that they have and I can also like I said upload my own you could upload your own LUTs if you're used to using one so we have Panavision we have Sony we have a couple different Sony ones we have red we have vlog uh, Canon and so there's a bunch of different compatible cameras black magic we have we have Ari and then we have uh, 2020 DCI P3 and because I grade a D65 Rex Auto 9 that's why I have it set for that but also you can make some bias adjustments too so you can adjust the white balance of the monitor that's probably gonna be another video about calibrating this monitor but anyway I just want to show you that and then we'll come out of there and then we'll go down and then you have your function keys this is where you would set up your fast function keys so F1 through F5 and I have it as focus assist false color zebra markers and audio meters those are the ones that I use the most but you can set those up anyway I'll show you how that works you just click enter all right I'm in focus assist and now I can toggle through the options so zebra H flip false color native anamorphic blue only mono marker audio meter fast mode so the things that you use the most you can set up your function keys for that so I just have mine set up with the ones that I use the most so focus assist getting my focus getting my false color and my exposure with the zebras adjusting some of the markers depending on what I'm shooting and then the audio meter if I want to use that or not so anyway, that's a quick walkthrough of the menu on the monitor now stick around for the second part because I'm going to show you some of the things that you can control with your camera HDMI control so that's in the next part all right in the first part of this video I showed you all of the monitor controls for the OC 17 inch monitor but alternatively if you're more comfortable using certain exposure parameters on your camera you can do that as well so right now you can see that I have my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro it's displayed on the screen now on the camera I can turn clean feed off I can also turn off the LUT so the monitor has built-in LUTs you can also upload your own LUTs like I mentioned previously but if you have camera LUTs on your camera you can also display those depending on your camera obviously through your HDMI port so I'm gonna talk about some of the things you can do on camera with your camera depending on the options you have now I know a lot of people might have different camera models I know that some cameras have waveform monitors some don't some have false color others don't so we'll just talk about the functions that I have on this camera right now so for the purpose of this video I'm using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro and it would be similar if you had the 4K or the regular 6K model so I'm gonna turn on the feed and I've got a couple of things that I've left on the monitor so on the monitor I have the audio meters I have a safe area guide and then I have a waveform and a vector scope because the Blackmagic cinema line doesn't have a waveform at this time of this recording so those are those settings and then I'm sort of mixing the two capabilities of this monitor to give me more exposure indications so you can see I've got the RGB histogram on the bottom left that's from the camera and then I have the waveform the vector scope on the bottom right that's from the monitor now I can also use my false color if I feel more comfortable with the false color on the camera I can use that instead of the false color on the monitor I can also use the focus assist if I feel more comfortable with that on the camera so I like the different options you can do with this monitor you can use the ones you're most familiar with with your camera and for the ones that you don't have on your camera you can augment that on the monitor so you can really do a combination of the different types of indicators that you have on the monitor and the ones that you have on your camera and you can find something that works for you that really goes with your workflow so if you have any comments or questions about 
some of the settings, you can post those down below too. This is also a good time to hit that like button. And also, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification. All right, back to the video. I'm going to recap some key specs just in case I missed a few during this video. All right, so let's get started. So it's a 17-inch monitor with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p It's got a color depth of 8-bit with a 12-bit process. It's got a color gamut of Rec. 709, and it has 300 nits of brightness. The aspect ratio is 16 by 9 with a contrast of 1000 to 1 with a viewing angle of 178 times 178, and it's a backlit LED, white LED backlit. Now there's also inputs for SDI, as well as HDMI, and analog video, CVBS, one input for that. Also an analog audio input of 3.5, so you can monitor audio as well. And then of course you have an HDMI input, which is what I'm using with my Sony and my Blackmagic camera. Also, you have USB input, so you can upload LUTs and for firmware updates. And it works on AC power or DC input with a power consumption of 14 watts. So there's framing tools for different aspect ratios, everything from 16 by 9, 14, 9, 15, 9, 4, 3, 2, dot 3, 5, dot 1, and 1, dot 8, 5, 1. Also, there's center markers and safety markers. There's crosshatch, there's guides. There's also exposure tools like false color, zebras, the histogram with Luma and RGB mode. We've also got access to a waveform monitor, a vector scope, and there's focus assist tools, which I covered when I walked through the menu, and that's red, green, and blue colors that you have access to, and also you can adjust the sensitivity of that as well. Now there's color management. We have different gamuts, 1.8, 2.2, 2.4. We've got BT1886, HLG, PQ. We've got different color temperatures. We've got D55, D61, D65, D93. Also different color spaces. We have ITU 709, we have P3, we have ITU 2020. And then also there's different LUTs that are already loaded as well as you have the ability to load your own, but there's 44 pre-loaded SDR and HDR LUTs, all from major camera brands. So that's pretty much everything. If I missed something and you know something that I missed, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, let's talk about the things that I like about the OC 17 inch LCM 170A monitor. Quite a mouthful. All right, so what I like is that you can get a sun hood, that's an optional accessory. You can also get a battery plate, so for Anton Bauer batteries or B mount batteries for using in the field. So those are optional accessories. I also like that you can mount it on a C stand or you can mount it on a desk. Those are cool things. Also, it's very solidly built. This thing looks like it could last for a long time. It's built very solidly. And also all of the features that it has are great at this price point. Now, if there's only one gripe I had about it, it would be that it's only 300 nits, but you know that going in, it's not like it's a surprise. So if you need something brighter than 300 nits, they do offer a monitor with 1000 nits. So check that one out if that's what you need. But if you're shooting in the studio, 300 nits, perfectly fine. I also like that you can also upload your own LUTs to it if you want. And there's certain features on that that certain cameras don't have. So for example, I don't have false color on my Sony, but I have it on the monitor. I don't have a waveform monitor on my uh, Blackmagic, but I have it on the monitor. So if you're used to using certain exposure tools, then you've got access to those on the monitor. And definitely having a bigger screen, really seeing what's going on, you can't really beat that. So that's definitely a plus. I think at this price point, it's a really good value for money. I'll put a link down below in the description where you can find out more about this monitor. And if you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. And again, if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and like I said, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and you'll be updated when my next video goes live. All right, thanks for watching. If you got any comments or questions, let me know down below. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.